We're back. Another episode. Here we are. And our next guest. Oh, man. This one's a special one because this is my only friend. One of them. Jonathan Mora. Probably your only friend. Here we go. Uh, all right, really, really quick, we'll just run through it like the background. <laughs> we went to the same high school. I didn't really talk to him in high school besides in football when I was an all star there and he was in the bench watching me go to work. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Um, so that was that. And after high school, graduate 2013, if you haven't watched the previous videos, they won't know that. But if they did, they should know that already. And we. Fuck, I didn't talk to you, what is it, like two, three years after? Yeah, probably like three. Three years. So that's how much I didn't care about this guy after <laughs> high school or anybody at that point. But when we ran into each other, it was literally because I was going to 24-hour gym. This guy said, I want to get as big as you. And I said, hey, let's do it. <clears throat> that's not what happened. That's not what happened. <laughs> so I started training him for free. You know, that's how giving I am to this guy. This is what happened. He posted a picture of him benching or something like that. I probably put like that's cute or something of that nature. Pulled up, <laughs> had to show him up real quick, and he was like, "Hey, show me how to get that big." And I was like, "Say less, my boy. I got you." So that that's true. So we'll go with that story, anyways. I wouldn't lie. Anyways, so that's how this ended up happening. And now, if you follow my social media, um. Usually, either he is here sometimes, or I am over there sometimes, or we're just going on a random trip. We don't really go on trips because we're always working, but that's always, 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 always stay working. But that's like the beauty of it because even though we talk, like I would say, every day through like all platforms of Instagram, uh, <laughs> Snapchat, or text messages, we go through all <laughs> platforms. But we don't see each other as much when, because of work. This guy works since he was like 10 years old. So Man. we'll get right to it. <laughs> what, so you started working right out of high school? During high school. Well, During senior high year, school. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Like the last maybe four or five months of high school. Damn. You were, I think we could say, in and out, right? Yeah. yeah. First Man. Time. How long were you there? Well, well, we're gonna. I know it, but we're gonna get right to it. So, how long were you there? It was like four, five years, maybe five years. Five years I was there, flipping burgers. Ooh, <laughs> man, um, what do you take from working? Because I think when you work, I didn't work right at eighteen, like a, a, I would say a legit job at that point. But from working, were you eighteen by the time you graduated? Mm, yeah, mm-hmm. from eighteen. To four years after, what do you take from that experience at In-N-Out? Because we had, so we had this conversation not too long ago. It was different, but we're, I'm going to try to go around those, those same questions because at when we had them, it was a whole different understanding of this guy because I didn't know the way this guy was working until that conversation we actually had because he was letting, like, you missed a lot of events oh, yeah. working. How many days would, would you work? Mm, five, six days. It was, uh, well, in and out they don't really like paying overtime, but you're just there, like, at peak hours. So you're you're there all day from, like, 12 to 8, 11 to 8, um, 5 to closing till 2, 3 in the morning. So it wasn't like I was working a gang of hours at that time, but I was definitely, like, gone all day or you couldn't really do anything because you have to go into work later that night or... You're just there throughout, you know, the whole day. Were you, did you, like, all right, so at 18, we turned 21. We're now 25, about to be 26. Did you miss anything during that gap of 18 to 21? Because as, you know, for the young viewers that are watching or 18 and over, obviously, um, they always say 18 to 21 are your prime years and 21 to 24 are even somewhere primer mm-hmm. because you're young and you're partying and everything. <clears throat> but for, if you're working at 18 all the way to now, like, did you miss that by any, like, at any point? Or did you think you missed out? Or 
No, not really. I mean, from 18 to 21, I was, I think I was still part-time when I turned 21. I might have been part-time or I might have just gotten full-time. But, uh, like, those first years, I was just, you know, you're just a kid. You're just doing whatever the hell. Work, I wasn't going to school or anything like that. So, on the off time, I was always, you know, keeping myself busy, whether trying to go to, like, bike meets and stuff like that or, you know, the dirt bike that I had or just doing anything, you know, whatever. I thought it was cool. <laughs> and then from, like, 21 to 23, I think 20 early, I think I had just turned 23 when I left in and out. Um, when I was full time, that's when I was like fully invested. So like, I knew right out of high school, like if I wasn't gonna go to college, then I needed to do something. And like in and out, the opportunity to make money there, like these there's guys there that make bank. And uh, I was, you know, when I first started, the manager sat me down and was like, hey, you know what? Like we like the way you work. There's an opportunity to make two, three hundred thousand in this company a year. Um, it's going to be a long process, but we feel like you can be a candidate for it. And, um, uh, you know, ever since then, after hearing this conversation, you know, they pumped me up and I was like, hell yeah, like I want to be six, I want to make six figures a year. Let's knock it out. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So like, I was like fully invested. I was like, fuck it. You know, I'm not going to school. Like I'm going to flip burgers. I'm going to do what I can here. Like, I don't know anywhere else I can make six figures working 40 hours a week, chilling, not chilling, but like. Just dealing with with fast food, with fast food in uh, yeah. in the fast food industry. So like missing out on events and everything, I missed out on basically every family party, anything that was going on on the weekend. Um, There's numerous accounts of me working ten to getting off at four or five o'clock. Me getting home, shower, like all right, hell yeah, it's Saturday night, let's go out and do something. Then eight, nine o'clock comes around when I'm out and about. Like, hey, can you come back in the store? Can you come close? Hey, you know what someone called off? Like, hey, we need an extra body. Like, you're down, we're getting slammed. And I'm like, fuck it, all right. So then, you know, go back to work. I mean, go back home, change, get whatever I had to go, and then I would go back to work. There was times where I would get off at uh, two in the morning, and the, night, the guy, the cleanup guy calls off. So they're going around two in the morning, anybody answering the phone at two in the morning, everybody's asleep. So uh, they would be like, hey, you, you down to come to work? So there I am, like an idiot, saying, yeah, <laughs> fucking go home, shower. Come right back. Watch the TV for like an hour and go back to work. And I did that, fuck, maybe two, three years straight. Like, I I, I didn't really have a social life because I was just like, I'm going to I'm gonna get to work. If they need me, I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm trying to, they, I'm trying I, to become somebody in this company. You I know? think we ran into each other, not ran into, but we linked up again. Your last year? Yeah, my last year I, being there. Like the last six months. Yeah, yeah. Because I know you were go to work, come to the gym, and then whoop de doo So you doing that, honestly, like, did that set you up now? Like, so you you left. So we're, I already know it, so I want to get into it. You left in and out for a better job. Now, the better job, you know, as... And we've talked about it, like, I can make fun of you and be like, man, you're a trash man, homie. Man. You're a trash man. You picked trash back then when you were, like, a youngster. Oh, you're oh. a trash breaker, da, da, da. But now you get paid. Now you get paid. We won't throw a number, but you get paid big bucks. Something like that. Something like that, right? <laughs> Transitioning from working in fast food, you would say not so much of a dirty job, to working now for picking up trash. We'll, put, we'll leave it there. Was that a big change, or what did, or how did you change into that? Because mm. I, I think what a lot of, and what what I what I try to get to, and what we try to put out in this content is help the thinking process of the of the younger mind, the young like the younger generation, or even our age, which was 25, 26, and older, whatever it is, is whatever job you have, you cannot be ashamed of it. If you're ashamed of it, you you won't get the result that you want like i kill bugs he's a trash man and look at us we're happy we're happy as, as can be but yeah. would you say for like you going transitioning to there is was that like a big change in you or was it just like hey i need to do this and it's gonna pay off more of like i need to do this and uh it was gonna pay off like my cousin is the one who got me in there and uh 
I never knew, like, I never thought about it or anything like that. You know, he was showing me how much he makes and stuff like that. And I was just like, you know, fuck it, I'm down. Yeah. I'm down to get to work, you know. And uh, in and out even though it's fast food, like, there, you, you, any in and out you go to, it's never slow. Like, you're going to be working hard, you know. It's like, there's always a sense of urgency that you need to be working there. And it's just like, chop, chop, Fast. chop, chop, you know. So, over here... It's 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 like the same thing. It's just way more labor wise, and this just thing is kind of weird because it's trash. Well, yeah. Well, the city that I do, it's 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 hand toss. So meaning I'm out, like I'm driving on the right hand side, standing up, like I'm pulling that brake, I'm getting out, I'm running down the street, picking up the barrel of trash, I'm throwing it in the bucket that I have. So we're just constantly on the go, on the go, on the go. Like doesn't matter if it rains, doesn't matter if it's snowing, doesn't matter if it's 115 degrees. Like we still gotta go to work. And I, I don't like being the last person to finish. So like, if I'm out there, I'd rather be the first one to finish and have everybody else help out everybody else than rather than people to come support me. So like that that helped out when I was like with In and Out coming to this job, cause like I knew like I wasn't a I just got hired. I was like, dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna bust my butt, you know? Like I didn't get hired on as a driver. I got hired as a helper, and two months later I got promoted to a driver. So I was just like, cool, you know, like if I, if me working this hard got me right here, then I'm just going to keep going. And, you know, and my supervisor, like, he's cool, man. I get along with him real well. He loves me, loves my work ethic, you know, and every opportunity that comes my way, you know, it's because of him because he knows, like, I'm, I'm putting that work in for him. We're going to shout out his supervisor, whoever you may be. <laughs> shout him out. <clears throat> but, like, honestly, like, hearing you even say that, like, I think that just transitions – I know it transitions into like you being as a person because for the years that I've known you now and I think I won't count high school because high school was a different story but like now that you know we're pretty close together like I would say we both win a good amount of money and we're comfortable not not satisfied we're just comfortable and we can go to McDonald's and you put yourself first like hey no I got it or it tries vice versa. So the biggest thing, like, really quick was, and I was telling uh, telling Brittany, my girlfriend, um, was a change when we moved out. It wasn't because you came, we got a new place and everything. It wasn't because we got a new place and you came to party. Um, you and, well, shout out to Chito. If Chito, if he watches <laughs> yeah. it, he'll if you see you're it. If you watching this. Uh, you'll see your <laughs> shout out. But it, it was a transition that we moved out. We got a new place. And you and him literally, like, didn't even come to a party. You literally came and helped me set up as much as I can. And that's like I, I was telling her, like, I was in, I was in debt. <laughs> at, at that point there, I was in debt. I was like, bro, like, everybody says that as soon as you have a kid, everything changes. But you and him never changed. So it was like, bro, like, to me, that was just like, that goes a long ways. So... You know, I wanted to give that that background really quick to <laughs> for for them li- listening and, and watching us. Yeah, now, moment, so so now, going into um, your motivation, eighteen to twenty five, working your ass off to where you're at now. Like, how do you continue to do that? Like, day in, day out. Like, all right. So people don't know, and this, and I'm gonna give this really quick to them. This guy works Monday through Saturday for two hours. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> At, so if he won't reply, say, like at 9 p.m., 10 p.m., sometimes because he's he falling asleep. But he's up every day about 4.30, right? 4, 4.30. 4, 4.30, and he doesn't get off. It could be an easy day at 2, 3 p.m., or it can be a long day, 7 p.m. Still drive an hour home, 30 minutes home, and do it again the next day. You, how you would explain earlier about in and out, about coming home or an hour going back, da da da. How do you stay that disciplined? Because that that's a toll on its own. Continuing and trying to stay motivated and and continuously, bro. Because that's you know eighteen to twenty six, mm-hmm. like twenty six now, gonna be twenty six. That's a whole lot of years continuing. How, how, like, what's your, like, really quick, how's your thought process? What's the motivation behind that? 
primos, listen. <laughs> I don't know, man. I just, I got goals that I want to accomplish, you know, and I got, I want to own things. I want to do certain things in life and sitting on my ass ain't going to get those stuff done. So if I got to work 60 hours a week, I mean, by me, that's fine. Um, if I wanted to, like we said, like, you know, if not that if you go to school, life is easier, but if I wanted, like, if I wanted to go that route and, you know, try to get a career in something where I know where I can make bank and, and work 40 hours a week and we, chill. We, we both, well, I went to school at least a little bit. I never oh, finished. Yeah, yeah, my, bad, my, bad. my guy didn't go to school. <laughs> I never did. And not, not to put a shame on everybody, but he it found a route and he is actually making a living to, he's able to not just support himself, but help others around him. And I include myself in there, like the meals that he has bought for me, the presents he has given um, my son, all the little things like he puts himself first. Why? Because he's able to, he knows he's able to give himself that platform to help others. So it's like, why not have guys around him like that? And that's my preference. That's my mentality. Like the people that you have around you will really say a lot about you. And if, in my opinion, if they don't reflect who you are as a person, and not because you're doing the same thing, but act almost the same way and think almost the same way, it's like that I can be around him. Because that's just like motivation on its own. And seeing him every day, day in, day out, as as much as we mess around, like that's just my motivation. Like, bro, I'm trying to keep up with this guy. But that's crazy because now we're you're going on eight years completely of just working yeah. fast paced or almost a little bit more. But it's like at one point, and just because I know and I want to get into them, we'll transition into their little. We'll take a little turn left. There was one point throughout that process that that changed or that took a step back that mm -hmm. was uh yeah <laughs> well, well we'll go there that was a little um <clears throat> ooh, it took a little like step back because well peop the people that know you will understand this but for the people that are just watching tuning in um you know again this is my brother and he has a nickname, as funny as it sounds, it's called Piggy Bank. So that's what I want to transition into. Like, and when did this happen? What, what, how old were you? April 5th, 20, 2016 or 2015. So, I remember how, the year. so how old were you at that point? 20, 20, I think it was like 22. 22. I should have been 21. Maybe 22. So before we get into this, ooh, sure. okay. there I'm it is, Papa. Uh, I don't know what we're doing all that. I'm going to take a sip. That was a big gulp, my guy. Oh, burning the, burning the coronavirus. What happened? <laughs> well... I, so I my, said it, so I said it last time he shouldn't be speaking on this but he's gonna speak on this because I want him to so like my hobby what I like to do is is go out to the desert um you know if you follow me on social media or anything like that every chance I can every chance I get you know I like to be out there you know um that year on my birthday uh, 2015 2016. One or the other. We were out there and um, basically a freak accident. And the uh, reason why I got called Piggy Bank. <laughs> we're going to show it. I got a scar on my dome. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I don't really know what happened. I, it, it, I don't remember jack shit. Um, but... We were out there, and uh, I was in a I was in a buggy. It was a sand car. What sand car doing out in the desert? I have no idea, but we were out there mobbing it. And um, you know, I was the reason why we had hopped in it was because my uncle's son couldn't start his banshee. He kept kicking it, kicking it, didn't want to start. So he was like, "Hey, let's go, let's go check him out." 
we hop in it. He was, I don't know, 10, 15 miles away. Like, no, not, not 15, like 10. It was like pretty good distance. We go out there. Um, we get it started. We go back to camp. Well, on our way back to camp, my uncle was like, I haven't been on all day. Like, let's just, there was, we were in a dry lake and he was like, let's just let her eat. So I was like, fuck it, I'm down here. We're already in this thing. So what ended up happening is we were supposed to have been doing 70 down the dry lake. And uh, I don't know if we hit something, we took a jump. But we basically, you know, ended up pl- jumping the thing and uh, landing upside down. And when that happened, the roll cage collapsed. And uh, it ended up, I didn't have a helmet or nothing like that on because we were just initially supposed to go help out his son. So when, when that happened and the roll cage collapsed, my head was what took the impact from the roll cage, you know, when we hit the ground. And, you know, I, I, I don't remember nothing just from what, what my cousins have told me and stuff like that. Um, basically, I was I was lifeless, you know. They thought I was dead. I was pale, you know, had a big-ass gash on top of my head, bleeding. And crazy, the, the camp next to us, that dude, he was a paramedic. He went out there, I mean, there was basically nothing really he can do. You know, it was not like he was in there in an ambulance or anything. They just covered it with the blanket. There was nothing they could have done to help me out. Well, I'm sure whatever they could have done, they did do it. Um, I was airlifted. I was in the hospital for a couple of days. And... Uh, you got a second chance of life. Second chance of life. They don't know why or how I'm still here, but I'm still here. You know, and um, I said it in the in like my first episode, and I think I said it in the second episode uh, before this. Like, this isn't a spiritual channel, but given the platform, you know, we're trying to provide the platform to tell these type of stories, like. There's something above us that just give us that power and give us opportunity like you that you again, as weird as it may sound like you we came across paths once again after high school, but you now here like being able to speak on this that's crazy and it and it's crazy because as I said in the first episode like people you got around you that that get you through hard episodes and hard times in your life and this guy. And I'm not even going to look at him during this time, but this guy, I, as much as I get, had to tell him, like, hey, this is what I'm, he said, hey, like, whatever we need to do, like, it's all right, with this, this, this. And it goes back to, like, how I said in the first episode, like, what my mom said, like, tell me who you have around you, and I'll tell you who you are. And even though I told him last time, my mom doesn't like me hanging out with him. Because we're drinking water. Mom, I know you're going to watch this at one point, but we're drinking water. Like, his family took my family with open arms. Like, no questions asked, nothing else. And this is, like, to his brothers, like, his ten brothers that he has. Everybody. Almost, almost. Almost. But his brothers, his cousins, his mom, his dad. Um, You know, I think one big thing for, like, me and Brittany, and I I told her, too, I was like, bro, like, we came back from Cancun. My family was up north. Her family was home. And, like, you and your family accepted us that one morning. And, like, hey, just come eat. Boom, boom. And it's like, bro, to me, that was, like, that's worth a million dollars. That's that's worth, that's priceless. That's priceless because that type of thing, to get accepted, especially when they, when people our age start a family, a lot of people fall off. And the only people that you find as family after, like, quote-unquote friends is people that have babies. And, like, <laughs> you don't have one. <laughs> At least we don't know about. Um, <laughs> you don't have one. You know, your brothers, um, even your sister, your mom, and your dad. It's just, like, you guys all 
as a person, like, as people, that's how I know, like, it's not that they raised you, right? But you took that away from them. Like, you embraced all of us. And you accept, like, you accept everybody around you. The same, not just me, but everybody around you. And we can all say that about you. Um, but because, like, you're here, like, that's a, that's literally, it can, so everybody that watches, like, it could be whatever, I would call, it, we could call this near death, because that's, that was, like, point blank, this is it, this is a wrap, no more. Everybody has ever had, like, a near death experience, like, you got to keep in mind, like, there's a reason why you're here, and you got to, you could just, you, you don't need to understand it. You just need to accept it. They gave you that opportunity to to do it again, and how I say, pay your dues. You 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 gotta pay someone back. And you that you never stop working. You've given yourself the luxury of a lot of things. You go on places, do this. It's like you've never, ever given gave a reason why not to work. Like we can, I'm not saying we are. We can get messed up right now, and tomorrow at four four thirty a.m. you go back to work. And it's like, how? Like again, like there's 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 a something in in you like that I wish others will understand because I think we come from a generation that I was still like we can comprehend the other ones, the ones younger than us. But it's like you come from, we both come from like someone that doesn't give an excuse on why we can't do it, yeah. right? Like. Hey, you need to work at 3 a.m. You're going to get off at 2. What Can you come? Hell yeah. Let's make it happen. Because like, like I was just telling you earlier, off camera, we got home, went to work early, got home. This is like 10 p.m. Get a call. Hey, can you come in? Let's do it. Let's go to work. But it's because there's goals. So when you have, I feel like when you have goals, you need to do whatever it takes just to make making them attainable. Because once you have goals and you don't do nothing about them, they just become dreams. If you don't be, if you don't make those dreams reality, like, you know, you wouldn't have like the truck you have, the trucks you've had, the cars you've had, and even though they're like, you know, the bike, the, and that's a, <laughs> that's another one. Well, we can even probably bring that up. Like, what you had a, you had a, you had a motorcycle <clears throat> coming. You know, coming from like 30, 40 minutes away, <laughs> coming to work this way. Yeah, it happened like that. And at 4, 5, 4 in the morning, 4.30 4, in the morning. 4.45, almost 5 in the morning. This is like, again, this is like when you think your day is starting and you think you're starting on the right foot, just another day happening. And then something happens in this atmosphere, in this world that just says, nope, this isn't going to happen the way you want it. I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to show you otherwise and why you need to keep going. So, yeah, it was, fucking, it was like a Tuesday. Um, get up, do what I got to do, and I'm on my way to work. Uh, it was right before 5 in the morning. Um, I'm on the 10, heading westbound. Uh, I think it was like right around Mountain, the exit Mountain. I'm in the carpool lane, splitting in my bike, lane splitting in my bike, and this lady decides to hop out of the carpool lane, uh, passing a, you know, the, the solid yellow line. So she got out of the carpool lane when she wasn't supposed to, and on top of that, apparently, obviously, she never looked at her side view mirror. So I'm coming in. I was probably doing about 60, 65. I was, I wasn't doing nothing too crazy. Um, slamming my brakes. So I'm skidding. No way I was stopping. No way I could have got around there. I hit the rear end of her car. Boom. I hit it, and I just remember looking over her car. She had a brand new Challenger. All all black. I'm looking over, seeing the roof of the car, seeing the hood. Shit. And next thing you know, I hit the ground, and I'm just stumbling, rolling, and I see my bike. Doosh, 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 doosh. And I'm just like. Fuck, my initial reaction was just like, yo, I need to get up and I need to start running. I'm in the, I was on the carpool lane, like, the, it, there was cars, it was like congested, but there wasn't, there really isn't traffic in the morning. So everybody's doing about the same thing, 50, 60 miles an hour. So like, right when I get up, I start running, but my leg gives out. Boom, I fall to the floor, 
and I just close my We had a little technical difficulty, but back to the story about seeing literally the car and flipping over it. Yeah, so ended up bringing in the new Challenger um, on the freeway, tumbling. I tried to get up to, to run to get, you know, on the far left of the freeway as I could. In that process, I ended up falling again. I just remember closing my eyes and I was just like, That's please it. don't hit me, please don't hit me, please don't hit me. And luckily, not too far behind me, there was a a city worker out for LA, and he had one of them trucks with like twelve foot stake bed, and um, just had he like ended up blocking the last two lanes so no cars can come. Um, and the cars that were initially behind us, like luckily they were able to move out of the way. So I dodged that of being ran over. But so I mean, how do you explain that though? Like I'm gonna cut you off because I'm gonna hit. How do you explain, like, you not being hit or any other? Because you were able to, like, you know, I, I know you said, like, your knee and stuff, like, you were still kind of able to walk out of it because you're here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, how do you explain that? Like, how do you explain not being hit? Like, how do you explain, we'll go back to it, not being crushed by, you know, your roll cage? Like, how do you... Like, you personally, like, I don't think I've I even asked you this last time. Like, how do you explain that? Like, what do you think? I don't know. I, I, I'm not into that spiritual stuff, so, <laughs> so I don't know. And it's like, crazy because, like, how... So if like, you would ask my mom, you'd probably get a different question. Uh, I mean, different <laughs> we answer, need to get around the episode <laughs> and the shows. We need to do it. So, um, you know, like, so I, as... I posted it like a couple of days ago. Yes, you know, we'll, I'll say it a couple of days from this is posted. Like, you know, uh, my grandpa passed away and everything. So this was like unexpected. I wasn't supposed to do this. I told him I wasn't going to do this. But something told me that I need to do this. So now we're here. Um, some great men in the world. Literally, when you do everything not by the book but everything that you're supposed to in a sense to take care of others around you and you get rewarded in some sort of way you know and and we got rewarded with him and and with everybody else like my family and like bro like some some like i know you just said you're not in that spiritual thing but like some some way somehow you got rewarded because you were able to walk away on both of them and a lot of people, if you put it by the books, they're not supposed to walk away. Because you hear like, oh, motorcycle accident, driver died, rest in peace, whatever. Or even in in that light, I won't say line of field, but like in that like off-roading, like you get accidents left and right when you're out there. Like I know you were, you were always telling me like hey, this happened and it's crazy. This could happen. This can happen. And you're still out there. Yeah. Even though you almost nearly died. Something I love. And you're there. So during our break and we are resetting well, like drinks and technical difficulties, whatever. He mentioned something. I would say stupid crazy. The medic that wasn't a medic because he was just in the next camp. You just said, where was he from? And I already know yeah. it, but where was he from? So I mentioned earlier, I said it was crazy because he's from... He he was a resident in Rosemead. The in and out I worked at was in Rosemead. I want to say two weeks after that incident, he went to that in and out, and uh, he went asking for me. Asked the manager about me, um, and it just so happened my brother. My brother worked at the same in and out as me. He happened to be working that shift, and when he asked my brother, like. How was he if I made it out alive? My brother was like, yeah, like, you know, he seems to be fine. Um, He's at the house right now. He's not working right now. But, I mean, he's, he's alive. And this this dude was, like, in shock. He's my brother said he was in shock that he didn't believe it. Don't ever count my man now. He makes it out <laughs> all the time. But that's crazy because, like, the dude that tried to help you out and worried about you literally lived a couple miles away from your work. Yeah. 
Like that that to me is just crazy. Like it's great and so I'll I'll bring this up to topic for everybody like, you know, if you're watching this far already, I appreciate you. Like, share, subscribe, whatever you need to do. But it's like you you have to see how everything plays out. It might not seem so ideal at the time. Like I'm sure when you were laid up in bed or at your home or at the hospital, like things didn't seem ideal. Cause I know you like you I already know it, but like your your side effects of that accident at the dunes. Some people is like, bro, like why me? Da, da, da. But it's like, why not you? You suffered a little bit of a I would say of a back step, but you're able to take those forward steps and why not do them? I speak on that now and I speak in it more I would say harshly because you know I feel well my grandpa taught us everything and kept our family together so like you know for all my family watching like I know it and I hope you guys watch this and and find peace of it but like great men great people in general get paid some sort of way and like I feel like for my grandfather like all of us came about and he started something crazy because he he was one of those like probably like your grandfather like first generation like coming over here and trying to start something out of nothing and i take that to now like even though we have something like i know your dad your family we've had stuff my family we have stuff but we try to start something of our own it's like yeah i'm working for my dad but i'm trying to we're trying to build this content to reach everybody in the world and that's my own like figure but like i know like the last time we talked you're trying to start something hopefully sometime that is going to feed you and your own because your dad does his own thing you do your own thing your brothers do their own thing and it's just like you can't say i didn't earn this because i have yeah and that comes from like how you said last time like your dad (laughs) Richo, <laughs> like he taught you like so much and like he does his own thing provides for you guys but you guys i was in my opinion like you guys have his back because you guys do your own thing and have your parents back same way like my dad does his does his thing and i help him but what i do is i try to have his back and my family's back so now when things come about it's like hey the, the money doesn't matter and i think at this point I've, I think I said it last time, like, the money never mattered. It's the comfort of it, and I think the comfort is what, like, makes us okay. But the the working hard and, and it paying off is, like, it will come one day, no matter what. Like, maybe when you started in and out you had, I don't know what you guys started of, but, like, I said it last time, like, I started at 100 bucks a fucking every two weeks. Now making more, and it's, like, more bill, more money, more bills. Uh-huh. <laughs> Start buying a bunch of different <laughs> <laughs> But we're we're able to like you know what if I gotta pay this and help somebody else, hey I'll do it. That'll come back to me later and we do it without intention of getting anything back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you it's crazy because we have somebody here, I have somebody here that can tell you two stories back to back. Where it could have, it could have gone sideways. Definitely could have. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it could have gone sideways, and some way, somehow, you walked out of it. And I know, like, you ain't spiritual, and this isn't spiritual, but it is like, for some reason, some way, somehow, you're still here, and it's probably to touch my life, to touch my kids' life, my family's life, and everybody around you, because. If you're ever invited to some of the morals parties, <laughs> Sorry. that's a that's a whole nother story on its own. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, and I'll go back to it, like, how do you go? How do you keep going? How do you after f- going those two accidents? How after working so much? How do you keep going? You what? <clears throat> so what would you and? We'll, we'll most likely just end on this one, on on this side. What would you give, maybe to the younger your younger self or the you know the younger generation? Like, how do you get to our position? How do you get to your position? What's one one or two things that you say? Hey, you know what? 
maybe this might help you. And if you take it, you take it and it helps you, it helps you. Because I feel like I could tell you a million things. It might not help you, but I hope it comes. you come to an understanding about how I did it and why I did it. Uh, fuck. Because <clears throat> I, I, I honestly think, and as much as I think we're in a resemblance now, which our girlfriends hate who we are together. That's not true. <laughs> She's speaking on it now. She don't like me. So. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but how we are now and how... You got to your position in life. How do you get to your position of being one of the, like, honestly, one of the happiest dudes I've ever met? How do you get to your position after working so, after working so much, not going to school? What would you say, like, if they had to decide where they work or school? Point blank. We we did that decision ourselves. Uh, but how would you? I mean, of what, what would you tell them? Different, but I couldn't tell you whether they go to school or. Or work, but... Because you didn't do it. Yeah, I didn't do it. So I, I can't preach about going to school when I didn't go to school, but... Bust your ass, man. None's going to be given to you in life. Put in that work. None, none, nothing's going to come easy. Um, set goals, set standards, you know, and just abide by them. Don't... Like, I, I say I slave. You know, I did a lot of shit for in and out You guys have no idea. And the vit, like, nothing was returned to me. And at the end of the day, like, I knew that. And that's why I left. When I knew I was doing anything and everything I could. I'm not going to say the company because it was just there's people above me that dictated certain stuff. I could do anything and everything they ever asked for, but nothing was reciprocated for me. And that's when I knew I had to leave. There was there was no future in me for that. No... Maybe I could have left, went to a different store, different managers, maybe then. But at the same time, I don't know if I would have been happy, you know, working those hours, missing out on every family party. Like, So if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't have left in and out there, right then and there to a different store like you just said, would you think you are where you're at now? No. No. There's no way. Would you do it any, any other way? Nope. Nah. So you don't regret it? I don't regret anything. Have you ever regretted anything you ever done? No. Or do you, like, before you make the, like, I've, I said it before, and I always say it to people around me. Before you make the action, you always know the consequence, and if you're okay with it, you do it. Have you always, like, done that in some sort of way? No, because I knew with every action, there's a repercussion, like. Correct. Good or bad. I don't ever, exactly, good or bad. And I understand whether it goes this way or that way. I know either way it could play out, and I, and I live by it. I'm, yeah. Like I'm okay with that, you know. Um, for sure. Live your life, dude. <laughs> you know, I don't it, know you like, gotta live your life. At, at the end of the day, like I, I, I know we're different because we live different lifestyles. Like I'm a dad, you're still, you know, no kids, and you, you, you're able to go out when you're able to go out. Yeah. But it's still like, and what people out there that think like, hey, you gotta be in the same things in order to be perfect and brothers and sisters, whatever. You don't got to be doing the same thing in order to, like, really have that bond with somebody because all the, I would say, all the moves I've ever made, I tell him, and he's like, hell yeah, fuck it, let's do it. Or do it, go ahead, like, all power, vice versa. And it's like, never, like I said it before on my social media, and I'll say it again. If you ever have a friend out there that tells you, no, don't do it, don't do this, don't do that. They just, maybe they don't want to see you succeed in that way because they don't want you to leave them, right? Like, I thought having my son would exclude me from a lot of other things, and, man, that was a total opposite. Yeah, at the beginning when he was smaller, we couldn't do a lot of things, but we hung out with him. They He's came over, you know, our, um, our other boy, Tito, when he's in town, he'll come on here, but he was over, and... And it, it, it's crazy because the bond that you have, like, you know, these are my brothers that I have on here. It's just, it's different because now there's no excuse on why things don't happen. You know what I mean? Like, there's no excuse why why we don't bond in certain ways because all of our things are out there. We don't, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of people feel like they just need to get accepted. And I think me and you carry ourselves, and we're not trying to be accepted by anybody. I don't care. I don't care about that. 
<laughs> he don't care about that. Listen, he don't care about People that. People don't have to like me, and I don't have to like anybody. She knows that. Even <laughs> sitting behind the camera, she knows I can. I'll do something, and if the other person doesn't like it, I don't. I don't care. That's the way it goes. But it goes with everybody, because you know if we go like I was saying in the, in the other episode of. Um, Everybody knowing us and this, Mora, Dusko, this and that, when we're s- still different. And now people just like trying to be around when we have things and they didn't come around when we had nothing. You know, now we have a platform to give something back. And it's like from here on out, like you just have to, how he just said, I did things without trying to get things paid back. But when the same energy wasn't reciprocated, I was okay with it. I just had to move on. And that goes with relationships or whatever. You give something and they don't reciprocate it. Hey, go ahead and move on. A lot of people just stay and stay and stay. And that's what I did too for T-Mobile. I knew there was, I had to do more in order to get to that position. But it wasn't doing that then. I left it. And I, although I had to take a little bit of a step back, I was like, boom, it paid off. And it's been paying off, definitely. But it's like, I think everything we both went through, what you went through yourself, because I think you went through a whole other thing than what I had to, go, had to go through, it's just like, it paid you back because of the person you are. Like, your brothers are the same, your family's the same that I've been around, and it's just like, take notes because the 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 jewels like that, you know, diamonds that that we say and that, you know, like, we'll give a shout out to Kuko if he ever watches this ever in his life. <laughs> that he has said, like, you you know, we'll, sp- we'll talk about this in another episode. But, like, your cousin, what he had to go through and how he is, your brothers. Everybody had a story and no one understands this. Like, this is why this is here because everybody has a story. Yeah. Now we're just able to speak on it. You know, like again, I wasn't I wasn't gonna do this episode, I wasn't gonna give this out there. Yet we're here because something above said, Hey, we need to do this and we need to give this information to somebody out there that said, Hey, maybe the world is done because I thought my world was done on Monday, the twenty fifth of January, twenty twenty one, I thought it was done. And for some reason, something in my heart, something in my head, you ain't done, you gotta keep going. And it's like has this type of story here. It's like for for one living that type. That's insane, homie. That is insane. And it's like again, it's you gave that what you what you think it's for them to understand. It's like how do you how do you do that? Like that's just insane. Like how do you how do you keep that smile and keep going with like all the <laughs> all the bullshit that goes on in this world? Like how do you how do you keep it, bro? How do you just keep going? Love life. I don't know, man. You love your life? I love my life. No regrets? Nah. None at all? Not even a single letter? You said when I took that uh, that fucking grass outside, you gave me the drink so I could puke. Ooh. <laughs> we'll save that episode for... Uh... No, I think you should save now. All right, we'll save it real quick. I think we got a couple minutes, right? <laughs> we got a couple minutes. Um, I'm going to tell a story. I'm going to tell a story. So he was like stupid gone. He was gone. Yeah. This is... So the bad thing about living where I, I live, there's a gone. bar down I the street. I showed him how to get home. I wasn't stupid gone. He didn't even know where he lived. I he live lived down the street, the street from my favorite bar. I live bar. across the street. Don't tell him, dude. Don't tell him. I won't tell you because you don't know about it. Basically, <laughs> this fool was like... <laughs> <laughs> He was like, my boy, check this shit out. <laughs> I want the healthy life, you know what I mean? <laughs> healthy. He said, drink this, you're going to sober up for work tomorrow. Friday night. And I'm like, say less. This fool, when we were walking home, saw a gardener. <laughs> and fucking stole the grass that was in this fool's bed of his truck. Put it in his pocket. <laughs> Got upstairs, got a cup of water, and just poof, 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 stuffed that shit in there. And he was like, wait, drink this. You're going to sober up. And me, like, fuck, yeah. Yak. Five minutes later, yak. If you have his TikTok, 
then you know what I'm talking Follow about. Follow me on TikTok. You'll, you'll find it some way, <laughs> somehow. Did you go to work the next day? Well, yeah, of course. Ah, well, we'll be cool. I wasn't sober, though. I wasn't sober, though. <laughs> <laughs> <Too damn much. laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that, we'll save Hold we'll on, save those we, rest of those funny shot, which, funny stories. You pick whatever. Oh, Ashley said that you guys are, are ringing her ears. But I told her that she's not here to defend herself. But she said no one. She'll her. she'll be on the on the show later on. They they both will be on the show later on, so they can speak their truth. But until then, we got some news for you, big girl. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> But in, in, until then, um, and I want to end this on, on this one uh, for the family member that, that, that watches, you know, just know there is brighter days around, around the corner. And for anybody having those tough days, I know a lot of people in just started 2021, we've lost a lot of loved ones. Um, just keep positive, keep going. And how my boy here said, like, you got to love life. If you don't love life, you know, it seems miserable. But until you do, I think you'll, once you do, I mean, once you do, you'll, you'll be okay. No matter what happens in life, at the end of the day, you'll see the light. You'll see the brighter days and you'll. Life's going to keep going. Life's going to keep going, definitely. And with that, we'll give a, a toast to life. And I'll give this, uh, like shot, the date, man. 1942. <laughs> Rest in peace, my grandpa, and to our amigo ship, our friendship, you know, they're jealous. No, we'll give it out there. That's not a topic for another <laughs> Toast to life, baby. Actually, Cheers. Used to be here for that one. Like, subscribe, tune into the next episode. Let's get it. <laughs> <laughs>